This whole section deals with user notifications. The first we're going to do is called a bottom sheet. And what it is, is it is kind of like the drawer that pops off, but it's from the bottom. It comes up here and you can put pretty much any controls you want in there. Typically it's for user notifications like yes, no, maybe that court, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and let's play around with this and see how it works here. First thing we need to do is let's make a function. Let's say show bottom. And in here we want to show model bottom sheet. There we go. If you don't know what that means, model is a term right there, that word model. Some people pronounce it modal. But anyways, it's a term that says that it's the only thing that can be active in the application. You've seen these before, like if you have a text editor open, you go to close it, it'll pop open and say, hey, do you want to save this, yes or no? So let's break this down a little bit here. And the context, this is where things get a little exciting. We need to modify this just a bit. This is templated, so we're going to return void. Context is going to be our current context. Now, builder, this is where things get nuts. The concept of a builder in Flutter is very simple, but also very complex. It means that you're not necessarily going to generate the code yourself. You're going to have code generate the code. To do this, we're going to say build context context. And in here, we've got our nice little function. So inside of the builder, this is what's going to happen. We're going to return some code. Here's our container, and we need to have our semicolon. In the container, of course, well, we have our padding. And let's just say 15.0, because that's a double. And we need a child. For the child, we want a new row. If you don't know what a row is, we're going to cover it in layouts, but it's very similar to a column, except for it, of course, goes in a row, not a column. All right. We want our main axis alignment to be main axis alignment center, and we'll explain what that is here in just a second. And we want a list of children fighting with auto indentation here. Now, in the list of children, we want to say new text, and then we want some data. And let's actually set the style. And let's set this to red and let's set that to bold now let's make a new raise button I like raise buttons as opposed to flat buttons because it's pretty obvious what it is it doesn't just look like highlighted text And let's go ahead and let's pop the navigator on this. Initialize our hot reload. And down here, we need to add a new raise button. And we're just simply going to call the show bottom function here. Let's pull up our emulator, and sure enough, we can click this and some info here and close. 
you can see how it actually grays out the application. So you can't really do anything with the app itself. Like you couldn't click on this button and show it again. But you can actually pop the navigator by hitting the back button on the phone itself. Now we're going to show something that's pretty cool. It's called the snack bar. It's a little complex on how to show this thing, so it takes a bit of explanation. We're going to make a global key, and it's going to use a scaffold state. What? What is that? What does that mean? Well, we're going to explain it here in just a second. We're going to say scaffold state equal new. global key, and I'm actually just going to copy and paste this just to make things a little easier. There we go. So what is a global key? Better question is, what is a key? And what's scaffold state? I don't understand any of this. Okay. If we go into scaffold, you can see that it has a key property. Actually, if you go into just about any control, you can see that it has a key property. For example, even the container has a key property. So first off, what is a key? Well, a key is a way of referencing the actual widget. Here you can see how we're setting the scaffold state. So what we're doing here is we're basically saying, and there's probably a better way, a more accurate way of explaining this, but what we're basically saying is this scaffold has a key of scaffold state, meaning it's taking this object and making a reference to it in here. If you're familiar with like C or C++, think of this kind of like a pointer. However, but because this is a global key, not just a key, it's a global key, this means that it will be available across the entire application, no matter where you call it. All right. Whew, that was a long-winded explanation there. Let's go ahead and show the bar and in here we're going to say scaffold state dot and notice how we can access the current state of the scaffold show snack bar we're going to make a new snack bar and content let's just say new text and we're going to say hello world Maybe if I could misspell world one more time, that'd be great. There we go. So what's really going on here is we're referencing this scaffold state, which is this key, which actually referenced this object. So we're saying this object, current state, show the snack bar. Gets a little confusing, I know. let hot reload take place here and you can see hello world down at the bottom you see how it disappears automatically I won't click the button and it just goes boop and disappears that's the snack bar it's meant for just instant notifications or on-screen display to the user let's talk about the alert dialog it's exactly what it sounds like it's just a dialog that pops up for the end user we're going to import the async package and let's go in here and make the function to actually show it. So we're going to say future. Let's actually pop that out. We're going to show the alert. We want this to be asynchronous. And we need to fill in some parameters here. We want the build context. And we also want a message. In here, we want to return a show dialog. Notice how that's instantly calling a context and a child. So the context is going to be, well, you guessed it, the context that we're calling in the parameters. Let's drop this down just so it's easier to follow. All right. The child, this is a new alert dialog. And inside of the alert dialog, we want to add a title. And let's add a new text. 
and this will be the message. Then we want some actions here. Notice how that's just a list of widgets. And I'm going to say new flat button. One of the rare times that I'm actually going to use the flat button. Why am I using the flat button? Because it'll visually kind of aesthetically melt in with the actual dialogue. So we're going to pop that on the current context. And then we're just going to say child is new text. And down here, we're going to actually show the dialogue. We're just going to say, do you like Flutter? I do. And then let's add our child, which is just simply going to be a new text. Hot reload should kick in in the background. And here's our button. Do you like Flutter? I do. As you can see, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. This is why I use a flat button in this instance. Uh, you could still use a raise button, but it would look a little off. You see how it's just very aesthetically pleasing? Let's change this to raised and just see what it looks like. See how it looks a little bit off? You get this gray box. That's why I would use a flat button in that case. Switch that back and it's good to go. Now, if you're wondering how you would put different items in here, that's in a future tutorial, but spoiler alert, really, you can do anything you want in this on press. You can call a specific function, save something to a file, to a database, make a web call, display another something on the screen, whatever you wanted to do. Okay, let's go through a fairly complex example. What we're going to do is we're going to display a dialog with a list of options. Let the user choose the options and display it back. First thing we need to do is make it a num. In our num, we just simply want to say what values we can have. Notice how that is outside of the class. What we need to do now, you guessed it, is make a variable. We'll say value. And let's make a function to set the state of that. Alright, so we've got our set state. We're setting the value there. Let's go ahead and run this just to make sure we have no errors at this point. This is where the code's going to get a little bit complex. We're going to work with an asynchronous function, so of course we need to import the async library. I should say the async package. We're going to make a future. And we're just going to simply call it ask user. Mark it as a sync. Now, this is where things are going to get a little crazy. We're going to make a switch statement. In that switch statement, we're going to actually call another function. We're going to wait the show dialog. Notice how it takes a context, so we're just going to give it the current context and a child. Let's break this down a little bit. For the child, this is where we're going to say new simple dialog. And inside the simple dialog, we want to do some things. We want to set the title. Do you like Flutter? 
Then we're gonna give it some children. Notice how that is a list of widgets. So now we can, you know, you guessed it, just add some options in here. We're gonna say simple dialogue option. And the simple dialogue option has a few things. For example, child and on pressed. So let's add the child first. And we're just gonna say yes. Now let's handle that on pressed. For the on pressed, you guessed it. We want to pop that, but we want to pop it with the context and a value. Told you that'd be a little crazy. complaining about something. Let's figure out what we did wrong here. So, oh uh, yes, right here. All right, so if this looks crazy, it's because it is. What we're doing here is we're showing the dialogue and that is part of the switch interpreter. So all of that is basically being read as one line. Then we've got the show dialogue. We're using the context. The child is just going to be a new simple dialogue. And we're awaiting this whole thing. So what happens is it hits the switch statement and then it says we're going to await and it's going to pop the dialogue and the code execution is going to stop here until, you guessed it, the asynchronous call to the show dialogue is completed. What we're really doing is displaying these options. Yes, no, maybe. And then we're going to return them back with the navigator pop. Wow, that is interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and build our cases for our switch. And we're going to say, well, let's call this underscore set value. That way it's a little more intelligent on what we're doing here. Yeah, that just happened. Okay. There we go. Now we can break out of that. And let's go ahead and set up our other cases as well. There we go. Now we need to actually show this thing. So let's go ahead and you guessed it, new raise button. And let's do the ask user. Wait for hot reload and let's jump into our program. Do you like Flutter? Yes, no, maybe. I'm going to say yes. And you can see that it worked as expected. Let's go ahead and change this so we can see the answer updating. Hot reload it and do it again. Pretty awesome. So Let's dive into this code a little bit, just so we can see what's going on. When we click the raise button, we're calling ask user. Ask user is an asynchronous function. We're calling a switch statement. There's the interpretation of the switch statement. And here is the, you guessed it, the code that runs. So in here, we're actually calling another function, but we're waiting for it because it's asynchronous. We're calling show dialogue. 
show dialogue is going to pop open a new dialogue, or I should say a new simple dialogue, with some simple dialogue options. So we click the button, code execution stops. This is running asynchronously. We're waiting for an answer. Once we click an answer, execution pops back into the application.